Nature is a fundamental part of us living. Like we live by nature, nature lives by us. After a while, the reefs began to get brown and it changes, and then after a while, it just die out. You hardly have any reef. See, every reef dead, I don't know how much long we're going to have on Earth once every reef is dead. The story of Jamaican coral reefs is really something of the classic coral reef story. That's one of doom, gloom, loss. The Jamaicans turned that into a story of how do we build for tomorrow? The importance of the sea to Jamaica is huge. I mean, we're an island, we're surrounded by the sea. Keeping the sea healthy and clean provides work for so many people in Jamaica. If we don't have a good healthy reef and a good healthy marine environment, we, we will lose that. That's me. My mother gave birth in Kingston, carried us home to Bull Bay, and that's basically where I grew up. So just constantly on the water, you know, I've seen the sea almost every day of my life. What has been a shock to me though is when I started to study marine biology and started seeing old pictures of you know, the reefs in Jamaica and I just couldn't believe that what it used to be. There was a long period of time when I was away. I came back probably in the 80s and it had just changed. The coral reefs of Jamaica definitely suffered a perfect storm. The 70s and 80s with the, the subsequent overfishing, uh, diseases, and then hurricanes really led to just a dramatic step-by-step -step insult to the coral reef ecosystems. There's a lot of different coral reef ecosystems on the planet. Every time you jump in the water, it looks different. Jamaica was the hotbed for coral reef research in the 70s and 80s. And after some of the decline, a lot of the international scientific community abandoned Jamaica. Well, the Jamaicans couldn't abandon Jamaica because that was their coral reef. I grew up here, right here in the White River, actually up in the hills a little bit from the White River. I'm Belinda Colliamoro and I'm part of the White River Fish Sanctuary. Um, I'm actually president of the White River Marine Association. We've always been on the water, always been snorkeling. I, you know, we've seen the corals that go down, the fish size go down, the fish catch go down, and it was just Finally, we had the fishermen coming saying, what can we do about this? So basically on the agenda is we're going to talk about some things I've learned. So we had our first meeting under the bridge. That's where the fishermen hang out. That's where they bring their, their boats up to. That commitment was what we needed to make the sanctuary work. And so the core reason for the fish sanctuary is to say, how can we, you know, how can we regenerate the fish? How can the fish come back? But fish don't live in isolation. You know, they live in the whole habitat. So we need to restore the coral reef and rejuvenate the coral reef that we have for habitat for the fish. We also need it because it, you know, it's a barrier. You know, we, all the way along this coastline here, we, it's a resort town. It's protecting our shoreline, it's protecting our resorts, it's protecting our jobs in Jamaica here. Our system, we have two types of nurseries. We have what we call the line nurseries or the closed line nurseries. And then we have the tree nurseries and we have corals hanging from them. My name is Anilek Wilmot and I manage Arakabesa Bay Fish Sanctuary. Basically, we've taken corals from the wild and we break them into tiny pieces 
and then each tiny piece grows into a new coral. So we're basically cloning them. There's a lot of work involved. to be underwater. They never called me to go diving and I say no. I'm never tired of going down there. I love it. My name is Everton Simpson. I am a coral farmer. The corals have a bonding effect. They bond itself to the host. First we have, we get a brush and brush away the debris from the host coral to make sure it is clean. And then we tie the other coral onto it and then it starts to grow. The sanctuary employs about 13 fishermen. And you have to be a fisherman to get employment with the sanctuary. When I go and see the fishes for myself, because when we go to visit the coral, the nursery. We see a lot of fishes around. So we know that the fishes are slowly coming back. Spearfishing is like quick money. It's like running. The faster you run, the greater the heartbeat. My name is Ian Dawson. I do spearfishing. Now I'm a dive master working at the Oroka Mesa Bay Fish Sanctuary. I do fishing for a living. And right now I'm raising fish. The sanctuary, I'm raising fish. If you don't put in, you can't take out. Simple. We planted about 4,000 pieces of coral about two years ago. We had a bleaching event and then some disease passed through and all of them died. Every single coral that we planted died. When the corals were dying, it was, it was very disheartening. When these, you know, these major setbacks happen and everyone's feeling down, we always think like, imagine if we didn't have the nurseries going. We are looking for violators, mainly, as we go. Quietly, you know. Sometimes you find spearmen or men with traps overnight inside the sanctuary. No diver supposed to dive in the night. It is illegal. They give you problems, a lot of problems sometimes. We are the enforcers of the sanctuary. They will try, but we are going to be there. I've been threatened, I've been attacked. You name it, and it's constant, it goes on. My name is Jerlene Lane. I am the manager of the Sandals Boscobel Special Fishery Conservation Area. It's really a risky job, and if it is that you are not firm and are willing to stand up for what you believe in, then you won't, you will run away, or you just won't take the job. We're heading toward the community of Stewart Town, uh, St. Mary. This marks the end of our marine protected area. Actually, this is a community that depends heavily on fishing for their livelihood. And this community does not take too kindly about the presence of the marine protected area. Mister, look here. And the GPS said, bop, bop, inside the sanctuary. What are you uh, inside the sanctuary. Why we have to take you? to court so many times for violating the area. Keep, keep we have select few violators 
So there's constant back and forth between us trying to get compliance. Yeah. Yeah. You can see some white sea urchins, some sea fans, lots of black sea urchins, that's great. Yeah. It's pretty good actually. It's working well. Some people aren't just going to be told what to do. They want to go fishing where they want to go fishing. If we can get them to come to the table, I think in the long term, I think you know we will get everybody on board in due course. The guys who are true fishermen, not the guys who are in it to, to make a quick hustle. Their great grandfathers were fishermen and it's come down from generation to generation. Those guys are seriously invested. Most people, what they see and why people have bought into it is walking down to the beach and looking in the water and, and seeing fish, you know, that's it. We want the corals to come back. And I think this local buy-in, this, you know, we've born here, we've lived here, we want to see it restored to what it was. You know, there's no job that's too big because we all want to make it happen, you know, we're going to go over and above. I think that passion that comes from, from being local, from wanting to restore your own home territory, your own home ground, you know, that's certainly a lot of the success. Morning, morning. What I love about my job is actually the opportunity to give back to the environment by protecting it. Uh, we started doing this in 2011 and in 2018 our fish stock was up and it's just been an exponential growth curve. All indicators are reef health have been positive since the sanctuary was implemented, you know. We've recorded a 150% increase in coral cover. Like the great mathematician, pyramid, things from century, but people still talk about it, people still relate to it, so. Years to come, that's a signature, leave a signature here. Live on with the grandchildren, you know.